Sigma's second fortress isn't exactly cakewalk, but it isn't exactly challenging either. There's one serious issue in this level, and it concerns a stretch of ride armor enemies who actually start in their armies. For starters though, we have a mostly empty stretch before the first refight of the stage, in which the upgraded buster makes its usefulness evident. Not that I really give a shit, but Penguin is kinder than he could have been time-wise, considering he only slides a bit. The real issue here is the upcoming stretch, and it holds deeper problems than you'd think for only 30 or so seconds of gameplay. There are two ride armors in this area, and they are completely incapable of being dug. The way their AI works is so sporadic it's difficult to accurately predict. Any fire from you knocks them back, and firing at them during different behaviors and at different points in those behaviors seems to invite them to do specific things each time. If you shoot them in the middle of a jump, they might immediately land and dash jump towards you. If you shoot them while they're walking, they might continuously leap backwards and punch. Shooting them a little before or after doing these actions, though, makes them behave completely differently. It seems random, but it isn't. Not quite. The real issue is that when they charge punch at you, your shots stop knocking them back and they will overwhelm and run into you, no questions asked. The problem is finding the very specific timing with which you need to fire at them so they don't use this, because it's pretty much invariably going to happen before you can destroy them first. Obviously you can just get lucky, but they overwhelm you commonly enough that developing a consistent approach was necessary to save aggravation. What you ended up seeing, and I couldn't even begin to tell you why it spurs their AI to behave this way, is catch the first ride armor on the edge of the terrain so he starts continuously trying to dash jump back at me and getting stuck. His sprite respawns, but the AI gets locked, so he doesn't respond to anything. Shooting the second one just before he lands on top of your area seems to always make him jump backwards, which gives you just enough time to destroy him before he gets back your way. It's solid enough, but they still act totally out of whack sometimes. It's baffling because I know it's not random, but I still don't get the way it works. This approach just seemed to get me by. Nothing else in this level bears mention, which is why I ranted about the only damn focus in it for such a long time. The climb before Storm Eagle was kind of annoying, but it's not remotely dangerous. So the Sigma stages themselves. It's already been stated a few times, but these are by and large the best part of the game for me. The music in the first Fortress stage sounds like the theme song for Judgment Day, and it drives in an epic mood becoming of the game's climax. Of course, the events of the first stage obviously bring this mood to a head the very first time you play. Really though, it's as empirical as the stage designs themselves for me. The first stage opens by breaking through a very overcrowded defense of strong enemies, and slowly climbing up precarious platforms to bust into the fortress itself. As the stages progress and you defeat Sigma's elite soldier and pick up Zero's buster, the graphical design, combined with the music becoming less action-driven and more foreboding, give an aura of continuous descent into the fire. Everything in the third stage has a murky filter over it for the most part. The backgrounds and topography of the first two are bright and fairly colorful, but the color palette becomes muted afterwards, and the music is just a thumping, vaguely ominous beat. Also, the sky and surrounding landscape is very often viewed in the first stage, and then slowly changes to only sky in the second, with the third containing no background at all outside of drab gray walls. I'd also argue that the bosses get more threatening as it goes on, and although that sounds like a no-shit statement, I mean more on their appearance than I do their difficulty. The final stage is just a long climb to outright creepy music, and nothing but the worms for company. It feels like you really are at the heart of conflict here. The music, like I've said about ten times now, is basically the biggest part, going from epic during the break-in, action-y during the invasion, foreboding the deeper you get, and eerie when you finally reach your mark. It really might just be nostalgia gushing on, but I don't think the combination of obvious and subtle things to create such an effectively good mood were coincidental. Obviously, I'm not trying to nominate a fucking Mega Man game for nuance of the century here, but face it, atmosphere was a big part of what makes the most famous old platform as timeless and no other X game really has an effective atmosphere to speak of, not that that makes them worse. I just feel like the care that was put into the feel of this game isn't present in X2 and X3, 
which are certainly evolved from this one in terms of gameplay and action, but maybe not so much in standalone originality. Hmm. If you hadn't noticed so far, not only is Ranga not a hard boss, they also arguably approach half the battle without dashing during a normal attempt anyway. The only thing that presents any issue is if a red eye is selected on the same side you're standing on. Actually, it's a fairly alarming issue, but it's not going to ruin things for you as long as you've dealt with it once before. The only thing that makes this fight any more difficult than a typical one is that you can't switch sides once the walls retract, to make shit like the aforementioned situation a little easier on yourself. Unlike his retread in X5, there aren't three separate eyes apiece to destroy, just one eye that switches between colors. I guess you'd hope for the blue one as much as possible then, if the inherent ease of the battle weren't quite disgusting enough for you. Other than that, this reject can do whatever the fuck he wants to without worrying me any. That's the end of a not-so-troubling segment, but next up we have Russian fucking roulette.